Hello. Um, just so happens that I happen to know that the entire universe wants and needs to know about the destiny of my sketchbooks. Um, joking aside, Jack, sketchbooks are, have been a big thing for me. Um, less than ever, I've been painting big paintings recently. Um, so sketchbooks have tended to be either because I literally need to do something small or because I want to sketch, which is a first time for me. That's not what sketchbooks have ever been about in my life. Um, so here we go. This sketchbook I'm looking at now, you know, in a way it's my first sketchbook since I was about 15 in that as I said, sketchbooks weren't sketchbooks, they were books of art, which is different. Um, this is fun. This one is um, a cover for the one o'clock gun. Um, in a moment we'll see other pictures related to the one o'clock gun that I did beforehand in a much more uh, inverted commas professional way. And after I have done that, after I'd kind of fulfilled the brief, I went and did this one. Um, I knew I wanted to do it in this style. I, I had this really strong feeling that it would look amazing in black and white print. And indeed it did, it did. I, I, I did, I, I love this cover and of the, the printed copies I've got of the one, the one I've done, this is the one that I'm the most happy with. Greet, um, playing cards. Um, there is a slight chance that at some point I may end up doing a tarot deck. Uh, and um, because of this, one of the things I, I went through was I, I, I tried to think of uh, easier ways to do it. And I also thought of um, traditional playing cards in the sense of the game. And um, tried to kind of combine the imagery and stuff here just to make it fun and interesting. Um, the idea of all of these would be trying out motifs that could then be used digitally to create an entire deck. Tarot cards are a huge project and they've been done many times wonderfully. Um, you know, I, I tend to suspect that, that people who do tarot cards don't get the merit they deserve, or the wealth, if you know what I mean. So, it, you know, definitely one of the things I was playing with here was, was with the idea of making a nice set of playing cards and uh, seeing how that went. There are digital things I did with this, went on to do this. This is an actual tarot card. This is the tower. Um, again, I'm afraid at this point, thinking of economy, thinking of how to do things fast, how to get the ideas down fast. Um, you'll notice that on one hand I'm sticking in fairly kind of modern looking buildings here, but you'll also notice that the imagery is really busting a gut to stay a, as close to the original, uh, I think it's the Marseille deck and um, possibly the Rider Waite deck. Um, so, um, uh, you know, there's a balance between historically accurate and the world we live in, if you know what I mean. Not much of the world we live in in this one, other than maybe a brick wall with some uh, concrete lining on it. Um, I guess that one's a fairly, uh, you know, a, f a fairly normal rendition of the sun, le soleil. Um, I'm going to say lots of French here, which will be wrong. I can't speak French. Les Etoiles, the stars, um, isn't that good? Tarot teaches you French. Um, I like this one, I like this one. Again, I, I wanted to get the real world in. I wanted to, um, I'm very interested in the idea of promoting the idea that spirituality is, is something that, that is in the real world that isn't about escape and um, that isn't kind of, days of your bygone era, when dragons existed. Uh, but I like this. I made her quite bummy. Um, I guess that's me 
trying to be a little bit feminist and saying this is a, this is a real lady, but you know, to be honest, she's still quite idealised, isn't she? Um, Star stylistic stuff. I'm, I'm I've been doing a lot of black and white stuff like this, particularly for a poetry project I did uh, about a year ago, uh, maybe even two now. Um, right, this one. Um, the imagery is not really very experimental for me, it's kind of industrially stuff. Um, what was experimental for me in this one was that I wanted to see what would happen if I primed a piece of paper with a very slippery um, layer of matte medium so that the, the paint didn't want to absorb to the paper at all. Um, it turned out to be quite a struggle, but it, you know, I, I quite like the result of the struggle, albeit you know, the motif and the imagery. I guess I was actually trying to be vague. You'll also notice that I, I used pen and stuff on this on top. Um, I've been doing that quite a lot recently. I find I'm freer with the pen than with the brush. When I pick up a brush I tend to go tight. Um, you know, I'm not that comfortable at mark making with the brush. So, you know, in a way a pen is a good way for me to kind of dive in and actually scribble. A self-portrait. Possibly the set best self-portrait I've done in my life, if not the second best. There are things wrong with it, but it's, it's, it's me. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, th I, I've recently been asked for kind of like photographs of myself and I have to say I hate images of myself and um, kind of wish I could just use that in place of any photographs because at least it shows I can paint. <laughs> um, and on the subject of portraiture, there was a competition this year last year um, portrait artist of the year I'm really not into competitions and I'm really not into celebrities but it just so happened that one guy who the first guy that did it um, um, Khan his name was he looked very like a kind of face I've been wanting to capture most of my paintings are very 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 white Caucasian and this was an interesting looking gentleman uh, I can't remember where he's from I think Khan could place him in India to all sorts of places uh, he's not from there he's from London he's a dancer and that is also interesting you know he's got a really muscular face and stuff like that but I really wanted to try and capture another skin color which is quite hard for somebody who lives quite a kind of restricted life. You know, strange to say it, isn't it? Um, this was an experiment to do a picture for somebody who um, had written a detective story set in a kind of Escher-like environment. I really didn't want to do something to the style of Escher. And um, I actually did this based on something I did on the computer first, where I actually built a kind of blocky Lego system where you could build such a thing and um, I, I don't particularly think it works I don't think he did either um, not everything goes well it was quite a long shot it was, it's a very different style to the sort of stuff I normally do I like it but but you know I, I don't know I, I think I, I think that, that there's something about it that's not dramatic enough particularly to be anything like a book cover or anything or an illustration um, I really wish I could remember her name. One of the, another one of the characters from uh, Portrait Artist of the Year. She's an author. She's a feminist author. I have to say, I, I really connected with a lot of the things that she said. And um, looking up, like later, what she'd done, it was quite fun. I, I'd say she was quite a, an awkward model. Um, really fidgety <laughs> but um, I really like it and again it was interesting for me because um, she was actually black and i would never painted somebody with black skin other than when I was a teenager and into rap music and you know again I'm, I'm a bit ashamed of that uh, uh, right um, 
No, she was fascinating, by the way. I, 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 listening to her talk was just fascinating for me. She was talking about sex and gender issues, and I, I really um, connected with, with some of the stuff she said. I, I don't know whether I would fully, but... Um, this... Uh, why did I suddenly decide to do a landscape? I think I just decided to do a landscape. Um, I think I wanted to, that's what it was, I wanted to play with colour. Um, I generally dislike landscape paintings. I generally think they're really, um, I don't know how to say it, the colour is always so clichéd. Um, blue skies, bright green grass, Naples yellow sand. Um, and to me that's, that's, for a start in Britain it's not true, everything's fucking grey. And secondly, all brown when it's hot. Um, and secondly, it's just really boring. So I wanted to use colours that were, you know, the game was to be as wrong as possible. My painting of wrong colours in nature. And I, I think it kind of works. It does look kind of real. I can squint and, and I can almost see it. Um, probably the less said about that, the better. Um, well... We we chose to lock up and stay safe from a disease. Um, I, I think it will be interesting to see how many of us fell through the net in that process, you know, without any support, stuff like that. I've had a rough time. Um, a monk. I think there's a kind of monkey character I've been trying to capture for years. Uh, when I was a game developer, there was this character that I had really strongly in my head that kind of represented the work team of, of, of Game Vile in terms of working on your own in the dark in some room. And uh, it was a kind of monk. And uh, so that's what that is. It's kind of like an Eddish character that I, I, I've imagined. Um, Although I think this guy is meant to be kind of fervid on the point of some form of claimed enlightenment. This was funny. This 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 um photographer was on Portrait Artist of the Year. By now I was beginning to get a bit lukewarm on Portrait Artist of the Year. Lots of brilliant people already do it. I don't really care about celebrities. And, um, but this guy was funny because he was a, a glamour fashion photographer and um, it looked like he hadn't washed his face before he came in and he had the worst lighting ever so you've got this really shiny man, you know, this, this is a really ugly portrait. I don't think this guy is actually this ugly but he'd really, for a photographer he'd got the light wrong, he'd not prepared, it was most bizarre. Um, that's my son. Um, that's actually based off a photograph. I saw something that I really liked and I've been doing all of this black and white stuff so I thought I'd try something designing with it. I think it would make a great t-shirt actually. He was mucking about in the... there's this place where the, the dust got really fine and uh, it was just such a cool pose. Um, you know, very theta I guess, I, you know. but. You know my art, I'm always drawing theta poses, you know. I don't know whether theta's the right word for it. Not alpha, is what I really mean. Um, I really like that one. This is probably the best picture in this sketchbook, and it's one of the ones that isn't really a sketch. There's a few of them. Um, kind of about... <sighs> crisis. Environmental crisis. Civilization crisis. Crisis of everybody being locked up. Yeah, crisis. And um, it was kind of based on the idea of um, one of my favourite paintings, Jadwiga's Dream by Henry Russo, where you've got this woman splayed confidently along a, a sofa, pointing out into paradise. And this is her waking up. Um don't really like that one. It was this guy who does some sort of law programme. He really, really looked like Martin Gore out of Depeche Mode, which really, really distracted me. So it's probably gone a bit gore, but it's not that good anyway. 
By now I was really getting fed up with the uh, portrait artist of the year thing and started thinking about, well, this is Jethro, my son, you know, paint someone from my life. That's actually new. Um, it's, you know, it's definitely him. Yeah, I'm quite happy with that portrait. Um, if you know Jetty, you'll see him in there. Back to portrait artist of the year. Oh, I really wasn't into that. Um, there's a photograph of this on my website somewhere, or I may even have deleted it. The actual painting itself is considerably better than how the photograph turned out, but, you know, still. Um, you know, it's an alright picture, but it's not amazing. Um, I think that looks like the guy. Uh, not much more to say than, than that. Again, none of these celebrities I knew of um, I just knew that they were celebrities. Uh, um, that's me being a kind of a, a devil's advocate and trying to get something kind of fine arty out of uh, Sharpies. Uh, I don't think it really worked. It doesn't hurt my eyes, but somehow it doesn't say, wow, this is art. Um, She's a sports presenter. I get I should know her. She, she's even kind of my generation of when I was little and watching telly. But I wasn't into sports, so I, I don't know who, who she is. But, um... I think that's not a bad picture of her. Uh, Biro and Ink. That's like me leaping back eight years. Uh... Back in time to when I did lots of things with Biro and then went over them with Ink. And, um, and I like it, you know, I, I guess, I do actually think I've moved on from that point, and, and I do like that look still, but, you know. That, this stuff was for a kind of gothy kind of thing, where somebody had set up a kind of like an art challenge thing with slightly gothic themes. And this one was as well, it's the one I, I did the most seriously for them, I think. Uh... You can see here that I, you know, I've been I've been wandering around other people's ideas. It's really hard. I had dedicated the last two years of my life to trying to devote myself away from myself to other people's projects, and then COVID kicked in, and uh, I was forcibly on my own with my own ideas and. It felt really wrong because it's very much what I've been trying not to do, etc, etc, etc. Um, I've forgotten, I forgotten what this one was meant to be about. But I basically got into the idea of doing a religious icon and instead of Jesus it being a snail. Um, again, it's that nature love thing, isn't it? Um, I'm doing a project on, on environmentalism fairly soon and, uh, well, we'll see. But, you know, it's interesting because I think part of, part of the problem I have with the project is, is that I am actually quite invested in that sort of stuff. But I don't always agree with everybody. This was some... I think he's a rapper or something like that. Um, hence me putting these weird black stripes along the edge. I, I quite like that. Again, I, I don't think any of these totally don't look like the people that they are. Um... Obviously, I'm competing with thousands of people. Um, upside down, this became a painting. I was sketching for a painting, and that's why I don't sketch for paintings, because she is so much better than the girl who actually ended up in the painting. And I like the painting, but I really hate it when I draw something like that, and then I go onto a piece of word or canvas and do something nowhere near as good. It's so frustrating. Right, this is Yadwiga, uh, my version of, uh, again, the theme of experimenting, freeing up. Um, I think of that as something that I've just started doing right now, but it, it is a kind of inner neurosis at the moment. I'm not, I'm moving towards quite tight, and yet, you know, the way I draw, I sometimes get things wrong, and, and you know, it, it may... I hope it doesn't, but it may look amateur, so part of me wonders, loosen up. Loosening up is also a great way of getting things right, because if it's a bit scrappy, you're a bit less precious, so if a leg's the wrong length, it's not <laughs> such a big deal adjusting it. <laughs> um, masks. Um, 
plague masks, uh, mobile phones. Yeah, you know, we, we've moved in a direction as forced by disease and also of our own choice with things like mobile phones, internet technology, uh, towards a pattern of isolation. Uh, I was talking with a, uh, my ex-colleague and I think one of the things that we both both got the feeling of is that everybody is now heading to exactly where we were five years ago and it didn't make us happy. Um, you know, for work reasons, we were online all the time, chatting to people online. Um, we couldn't, you know, we, we couldn't go out much because we had to work so hard. And it, it's just, it's really, really, really bad for you. And, um, and you know, that a disease comes along and suddenly we're all wearing masks just adds insult to injury. Um, oh. Uh, if I was really clever, ah, Peter Draws is a YouTuber, and I don't know why, but I start therapeutically watching him doing his little doodles and stuff. I used to do stuff very similar to that when I was about 15, nowhere near as good. And in fact, if you look at this, you can see what happens when I just go blah 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 blah. It gets fairly chaotic, if you know what I mean. It doesn't become something that you look at and go, oh, what's that? You just look at it and go, blur, you know. Um, so it's, you know, I guess that's almost a tribute to Peter Draws on YouTube. Um, that. I wrote a story about that. Um, it's pretty dark, so I won't go into it. I, I, futurism mixed with realism. So, y y you know, yes, it's the future, but the end result is that they're sitting in a table that looks like a cross between uh, something from McDonald's and train seats, you know. Uh, I like to call it steam crap. Um, ooh. That was uh, that was originally uh, they had literary salon have a theme <laughs> Renaissance, um, turning to a painter and say, okay, Renaissance, just draw something, is a bit like turning to uh, an athlete and saying, okay, uh, cheetah, run that fast. <laughs> the Renaissance is famed for amazing art, so it's it's a bit of a struggle. <laughs> to do renaissance themed art projects and not look crap. And this one, it actually started really interesting, like a chess pawn, but then somehow I went, I went kind of semi-realistic with it and then you just get those distortions stop being intentional and start looking absolutely terrible. That one, that was actually a story I wrote. Uh, in that instance, I gave myself such a terrible brief. You know, it's meant she's meant to be a attractive, but only attractive enough to get by in a kind of I don't know what to call it post civilization society, and she's meant to be a little bit terrifying and domineering and. Yeah, you know, lots of things fighting against each other, and and you know, not that keen. This was also an experiment for the literary salon. I don't know whether I even submitted this. Um, one and zero, my heart is true. The river flows down, no ebbs. One and zero, I know, I know. The truth is right, no catch. One and zero, my eye is false too. Um, huge debate between my colleague and I over a period of 10 years about whether or not you could sum up the world in Boolean logic. And I am very, very um, unconvinced by Boolean logic. Uh, too many things are neither true nor false. Some things are even double true and double false. Uh, I, I, I'm, you know, coming up with examples. Well, one is the river flows down. Yes, the river flows down. Look at it closely, lots of it's going up. Um, sometimes forcing someone to say, yes, it's true or no, it's false, is forcing them to lie. And that we base so much of our, our modern logic on bullying yes and no answers, I think is problematic.
So this man is playing with a true and false machine. Um, Renaissance, again, a uh, literary salon. Uh, I actually think this is lovely. Um, it's pretty weird. It's meant to be Venus and she looks really boyish. And, uh, you know, <laughs> if I get analysed, this will be the page where they, where, where they uh, question my sexuality. Um, all sorts of things also nobody picked up on um, when, I, when I've shown it to them. The, the square and the circle and the triangle are all to do with the kind of log logical structure that kind of ended up feeding the Renaissance and the Enlightenment, the ideas that everything could be sorted out into a logical pattern. Um, she's coming out of a shell, that of course is reference to the original Venus and the legend. The rose, uh, I think Venus? got cut on a rose and that's how her blood came to earth and poets came into existence. Bit of token Greekness in the background, no particular symbolism there. Short hair, I just thought that was interesting. Um, and I think, you know, yeah. And, you know, it was purposeful that I, I, I thought, you know, I'll make her pretty but I'll make her quite boyish. This is going to be, you know, Venus theoretically is, is, is a lady who's going to spend a lot of time kind of hanging out with men and, and probably being able to relate to them. I don't know. Uh, watercolours. I'm going to do some, show you some stuff in watercolours. I was just experimenting with watercolours. I hate watercolours. Um, symbolism. I guess I was having a bad day. Uh, This picture is a mixture between like. Again, it's one of these situations where I'd drawn it stylized to start with and then it kind of hit it with reality, and I shouldn't have done that because as a stylized picture, she looked really quite good. Do you know what I mean? And and there was something really interesting about what was going on. But when I hit it with, with a with a degree of realism and tonal stuff, I keep talking about trying to free up suddenly the things that were slightly wrong about her proportions really leapt out. I kind of, kind of like that, but kind of don't. Again, this is for that goth thing. I've remembered its name, Zombie Nation Art Challenge. I, I, I kind of enjoyed it, but at the same time, I've, I've been kind of like one foot in and one foot out with it. Partly because, I, you know, I, I don't, you know, goth because it's goth I struggle with a little bit and, um, you know, some of the ideas I couldn't relate to at all, some of them I could, and even within that remit I'd hate to go to a gallery and say, oh, I did this because it's gothic. No, no, I, you know, I, I am very that way inclined, if you know what I mean, but I'm, um, I, I don't... I don't know. I don't really want my art to identify with it particularly. Um, but I like this one a lot. Uh, Little Red Riding Hood having a much more realistic experience with wolves in a forest. Um, obviously it's not very cheerful, but um, but I like it. I think it feels desperate, which is... I don't know, that's quite... I, I find that quite hard to capture, if you know what I mean. And I, I think other artists do. You know, often you'll see like a classical paintings from a long time ago and they're all beautifully drawn but they look like they're pinned there you know and um, um, Martin Page um, wants a knight and um, I'm probably not the right guy for it because uh, I you know I like my knights posh corrupt and dodgy and um, this guy looks posh, corrupt, and dodgy, and, uh, and, you know, I'm into the dark, I'm into, I'm also into, I, one, one thing, I'm, I'm into theatre poses, do you know what I mean? I, I, I'm, I'm into characters not being heroes, I'm into that sort of stuff, so, yeah, this guy looks quietly worrying, doesn't he? Um, another little Red Riding Hood, um, I think that possibly this one was inspired by the fact that looking at the watercolour one, um, the the proportions worried me so much <laughs> that I, I had to do another one. Um, I've had a few cracks at Little Red Riding Hood. Um, 
This is um. Oh. Ah, he summoned someone. Uh, it was that. It was one of these gothy things again, and and I thought it would be fun to have somebody doing something like a seance and using a candle and getting hurt. Just a, just a really kind of strong image, you know, like this is the bit where it's beginning to go wrong and something's happened to his hand as a result of the little spirit in the candle. So, you know, not good things. Um, wow, I'm proud of the van. I cannot draw cars for blood or money and that's a nice car. It's actually for my dad's 80th. Um, I'm not particularly proud of it as a picture, but to be honest, drawing this takes me out of my remit in so many directions that, I, you know, it would be astounding if I was like, wow, at the end of it, you know, um, trying to draw family members in the 1970s on a holiday in the south of France <laughs> with a VW camper van in the back is, is, for me, as big a long shot as it would be to, to some artists to say, okay, draw a dragon with a uh, mermaid clinging to it, uh, floating through space. You know, it, 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 it's not my remit. Celtic knot for a book on the runes that I'm doing. Um, that's probably the first time I've mentioned this. Uh, I don't think this particular knot will be used. Um, I think we're going to go for another format, which is a huge relief because that square roughly represents the format that we started with. Um, a tarot card! As I said, there is a, there is a chance that I'll be doing a, a tarot deck. Um, being into kind of like uh, rune magic and a bit gothy, of course I banged into the tarot when I was quite young. I think I used to be quite um, <laughs> lukewarm on the tarot, if you know what I mean. But I think as years have gone on, there's some stuff that I've really started to empathise with. Uh, there's a particular card, the Chariot, that really screamed at me a couple of years ago. And, uh, you know, um, some of the imagery has grown into meaning a lot more to me than it initially did. Um, more black and white. Uh, again for uh, uh, Edinburgh Literary Salon. Um, quite a lot of the stuff in here refers to the Edinburgh Literary Salon and in fact there's more coming soon. Uh, I don't think that that's going to make it in the book, so I think it's, it's fine. <laughs> uh, it, I, you know, I have to say I actually like it. I think, I think it was... Yeah, I shouldn't say too much about that. Um, a knight! Uh, trying to do a knight again. Again, you know, I've ended up drawing a rather gritty looking miserable knight. Um, I, I, to be honest, I probably spent more time worrying about the horse. Horses are about the worst animal on, on earth to draw. We all know what they look like, and yet we don't. Um, that won't make sense. Uh, everybody instinctually looks at a bad picture of a horse and knows it's bad. You know, Velasquez got horses wrong sometimes, and we know it. Um, and yet at the same time, when you actually sit down and try and do one, you, you realise how little you know. And, uh, and in fact, you know, Little eno enough to actually sit there in front of a picture of a horse and get it wrong. Uh, lit lit little enough to draw the outline of a horse perfectly and then get the tone wrong enough to actually make it look wrong. Uh, it's interesting. Um, the next sketchbook is gone. Um, but, uh, you know, obviously the art's here. Um, this is, we're going to do a leap in time back a bit. Um, the last picture in that was done about maybe a month ago. This is going back a, at least a year ago um, for Anita's stuff. She's talked about doing a book called Deeds for Dragons. She'd really like to do that project. And, and if anything, 
I, I've been a bit hesitant. It's quite a lot of work. It needs it's it it needs to be done very well, and uh, I, I think my pictures are good. But I I, I think uh, to pull it out into something larger is 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 is, is, is hard. This is me warming up. Total leap in time again to the present. This is this is like two days old. Um, warming up for some kind of environmental stuff. Um, as you might have noticed in this video, I've been talking about environmental stuff quite a lot. There is a lot of environmental stuff in my work, but um, I'm actually quite scared to kind of come out and do it publicly um, because you know. I don't know. It's it's something that's very hot at the moment, and and my views aren't entirely aligned with anybody, to be honest. Um, I think that one's a bit. On one hand, I think it's a lovely image, and on the other hand, in terms of its imagery, it's a bit blatant and brutal. Um, that was something I did with a guy called Abs. Um, he wrote a story about a kind of military wall along the border between England and Scotland and uh, this guy is actually enjoying floating across the water but I, I've made him look quite dead you know the, the, it was a kind of cyber story it, it's got elements of uh, you know it's hinted at that he had technology actually built into his body this one this is the nicest way to see this image other than in life because the photograph of it was so diabolical. I was trying to free up here, and you can't tell. Um, uh, I was also trying to speed up, uh, not with that one, but with most of the ones we'll see here, um, because I'm about to do something quite hard that will be fast. <laughs> need to be done fast. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna, yeah, again, trying to free up, again, reaching for a pen to free up. I, You know, when I painted this, I, I freed up plenty, but then I tightened again. And and to be honest, I think a lot of the kind of liberation in that picture, I kind of wish hadn't happened. Um, but, you know, I like it. I, I like that picture. I, I, it's kind of... This one here, uh, it's again the environmental thing. A bit softer. The meaning isn't. Um, the, part of the idea of this is that a little sparrow comes down and begs and uh, the lady's like, no, I'm keeping my fruit. And then the sparrow basically says something on the line of, I die, you die. Um, you know, the world is connected. If you don't look after me, you'll die. And that's the point they are at, if you know what I mean. They're looking at each other after. The sparrow has just said something on that level. Uh, this is nut, and this is me being even more vague about the environment, but this time in a kind of pleasant way, and it's just net. Nut is the wife of Jeb. Nut is the sky, um, Jeb is the earth, and Nut is usually portrayed naked, kind of hanging over us, and they were separated by the gods because, um, maybe Ra, because, um, they were having too many babies and they were gods and there were too many gods. Um, I thought it would be nice to kind of give her some clothes and let her relax a little bit. And uh, but I haven't turned Jeb back into a manual notice. He's still a still a, a, a lump of earth. Um, suddenly thought about the eye of Jupiter and the eye of Ra and so Jupiter's in it. Um, I'm not very good at painting Jupiter, and I keep trying. Uh, that's for the literary salon. Um, ages and ages ago, I did them a logo, and I, I, I you know, they have a bucket where you, where you could put money in to help them run it. And I'd always walk past the bucket because I'm kind of skin, and what money I do have isn't really mine. It's really my son's and my wife's, and. Uh, they really, really liked it, and I was actually quite insecure about it, in that when they, they, they showed they liked it and started using it everywhere, it was like, I'm not sure about that. And I actually had several attempts to redo it, 
I think I've since discovered that it is actually a really good logo. Um, I struggle with the fact that the writing, there's so much writing, Edinburgh Literary Salon, on a logo, and that, that means that I feel that it's very restricted in size, but it would look great on a t-shirt and stuff like that, so, you know, that, that's all fair dues. And um, this was for, uh, oh, our project where they went around schools and got kids to write science fiction stories. I have to say I love this spaceship. And, uh, you know, it, it ended up in the book. So, happy times. Um, that's it for this, this particular sketchbook. Other than some, I, I'm going to run out of time on the camera anyway. There was a whole bunch of stuff I did for Anita that I've probably already kind of briefly shown. But, yeah. Two sketchbooks end their life. I'm going to now take this sketchbook and cut it apart so that it can go into a folder like this. Um, sketchbooks damage themselves. That's why that one, uh, this sketchbook that is no longer a sketchbook is no longer a sketchbook. It's because if you leave acrylic paintings together and you're in anything but a really dry environment, they can actually stick to each other, which is just gutting. Um, yeah. So, these, these, these are my sketchbooks. This is what a sketchbook can look like if you don't do it well. Or if you do it really well, depending on how amazing you think I am.